Hey up YouTube, it's your favourite Northern Gorilla, Mr B, and I'm here to talk about XCOM 2, which is this month's free PlayStation game for any PSN subscriber. Now if you're wondering why all of a sudden I'm not wearing my glasses, because I tripped over and smashed them. He <laughs> got in the eyes and everything, it was horrible! And yeah, and I've got soap in my eyes and everything, so it's not been a bloody good morning at all. But we're gonna do this shit anyway. Let's roll! XCOM 2 is a turn-based strategy game that originally came out in February 2016, following from XCOM 1. It does have a good following, but it is a bit of a niche market for that type of game. XCOM 2 is basically a sci-fi equivalent of Risk, in fact it's Risk 5.0. But how does it stand up to 2018 scrutiny? It did well in 2016, but games are judged by a different metric these days. Let's find out, shall we? But before we do, have you played XCOM 2? And if you have, what do you think about it? I mean, are you a fan of the niche genre? If you are, or if you're not, get in the comment section, let me know, let's have a talk about it. And if you can't be asked to do that, PISS OFF NOW! Eh, <laughs> only joking, stay, not joking, stay, stay, stay! So the premise of the game is a pretty basic one which is the exact same premise that was in a TV show called Falling Skies, I don't know if you remember that or not. Basically, alien freeloaders come down to mess up all our crap and take it all for themselves and enslave humanity. There is a sect of rebel... Uh, a sect of rebel what? A sect of rebels, call it. Uh, allied nations, whatever, that are going to fight back against the aliens or advent or elders to take the world back for humanity. The group of rebels, of course, being led by you, the command. I've got some footage coming up, which shows you exactly what I'm talking about, and it, give, it sets up the game really well. So right at the start of the game, it's not spoiler. Don't worry about it, it happens right in the right in the beginning few minutes. So, without further ado, roll the footage, Mr. B. Excitement continues to build as city centers across the globe prepare for the 20th anniversary of Unification Day. Thousands line up at the site of the Great Accord, celebrating the formation of the Advent Coalition. In keeping with their promise to humanity, 12 new gene therapy clinics will be opening in select cities by the end of the new year. Despite the attempted attack by fringe elements, operations at the new facility in Paris thankfully remain unaffected. In response to the unprovoked intrusion on the eve of our most beloved celebration, the speaker reaches out to us. A small number of dissidents again repeat the mistakes of the old world. Striking as we celebrate the benevolent savior who time and again offers only friendship and compassion. Yet these trivial actions could never break the bond between humanity and the elders. For such a basic premise, the delivery of the story is exceptionally good. Not because of the story itself, but because they use gameplay elements to really concentrate that tense feeling you get with um, any sort of thriller. The, there are moments in the game where you truly do believe that if you make the wrong decision at any moment, you've lost everything and you generally in those situations have to restart the game and try again there were moments of real despair there were moments where the advent are not you know you can't just shit stomp the advent into the next week they do fight back in a very strong way and they are tactically astute as well so when you put all those elements together it does make for a a very compelling story that you connect with that you can immerse yourself in quite easily one of the biggest metrics in 2018 that every game is judged well not every game but most games are judged by is the graphics and for a top-down game it is scrutinized just a little bit more because it's got a little bit way to go to catch up to first-person shooters which is a genre that dominates the industry XCOM 2 however doesn't disappoint in fact, the graphics are done exceptionally well. It, 
the, the little arenas that you're fighting are built are populated with tons of cover destructible environments and invariably lends itself exceptionally well to the strategic genre you get a definite sense in certain areas that it's been bombarded by the advent as the advent try and wipe out any sect of rebellious humanity whether in other areas you can see where the advent have actually taken control um, mainly in the posher districts there has been a lot of time put into the graphics but for some reason that also well does produce quite a big con for me and that's the loading screens I mean, the actual map size is the whole of the world but it's made up of little tiny arenas that you load into to actually fight the the enemy because of that the loading time between actually pressing launch mission to actually get into the mission can be two or three minutes long and when you add that up over time it becomes quite a chunk of it becomes quite a chunk of your time that you're expending waiting to fight and for me that is a bit of a negative the other aspect of graphics of course is the npc design and the soldiers of the soldiers there is an rpg aspect to this because you can actually create your own personal soldier i created one and unfortunately died in the very first mission and that was it gone i was like oh, really it took me all of 10 minutes to make that bloody character but you can also um adjust the the appearance of standard soldiers that you get to control to really make your own squad that you if you base a squad on a set of friends, for instance, you actually start caring a little bit about them because you don't want them to die. Because if they die, that's it. There is no coming back. It's move on to the next soldier. The gun animations are well done exceptionally well. Um, and the alien attack animations are done really well too. Um, some soldiers use guns, some soldiers use scion attacks, but they all look very, very, very good uh, and well polished, which is certainly to its credit. Overall, the graphics, when you take everything into consideration, putting the loading screens to one side, you can see why it is very pleasing to the eye. You, you certainly get that aspect of a great AAA polish. I mean, all, all up until recently, um, the game was still 40, 35, 40 pounds. And we're talking probably four or five months ago. I picked it up on sale a couple of months ago at 25 pounds. So you can imagine <laughs> my utter joy when I found out it's going to be free this month. The main aspect that every game should be judged by is its gameplay. Now, let's just address the elephant in the room. This is a top down turn-based strategic game which is an exceptionally niche market so it's only going to suit certain type of players there is a lot of micromanagement involved um, especially with your base that has um, several layers but you've got different compartments of, of your base your base by the way is a flying fortress and that's been stolen from the aliens not that humanity is made up of thieves or anything but it, yeah it's a stolen fortress each part of it you can add certain bits to it which help you progress in the game you can have like a, a guerrilla fighting school which gives you more players to play with and things like that and then of course you've got your squad to micromanage and um, deal with their injuries and things like that the gameplay itself adds so much stress to, to the actual game and like i alluded to earlier it helps drive home the narrative because there is a race against time um you'll get um advent black sites that pop up which you have to get before the time runs out which i believe is like 21 days game days you get you get like 21 days to actually physically get this point now if you don't get it that's it game over start again so you're making decisions all the way through based on intel that comes in and based on supplies that you need and things like that you are constantly making decisions or worrying about which way to go because if you make that wrong choice that's it but like i said that sort of gameplay 
helps drive home the narrative so to me that is done absolutely superb I mean, going back to the the troop side of it as well one thing i really did like and i wanted to sort of give this its own little special mention was if a troop or a trooper or a ranger or whatever has been in a particular chaotic battle they suffer from ptsd afterwards they will not go on another mission until they are cured and that adds a sense of realism um, which you don't get in other games. Normally it's, right, mission done, on to the next. This one is more like, yeah, well, that mission done, but because she didn't do so well, and because this geezer saw his um, troops die next to him, his compadres die, he doesn't want to go out again. But we'll fix him for you, he's going to give us time. So that troop will not be ready for a certain amount of days. And to me, that... <laughs> That's an exceptional um, gameplay aspect to put in a game like this because it only adds to more decisions you've got to make. Which one do you take in his place? Because you have a roster that you go off and that you, you individually improve as they fight. But if you've got a team of veterans that all of a sudden one gets PTSD because he's lost a couple of them, you're then sticking the rescue squad with rookies who won't hit as hard who are more prone to PTSD and things like that so oh I'm missing that oh, don't get me started on bloody missing I tell you what the, there was a moment in the game that let me just explain this first when you're targeting an enemy so you get into position you're gonna shoot at an enemy to take him out a little number comes above and comes above in the hood that tells you the chance of actually hitting that soldier from that position and you've got two choices at that point you can either move a little bit further on try and get a better position or fire from that point and take your chances doesn't always work out well in fact i'll show you shall i roll the footage Any remaining hostile contact? Come on. Heading there now. Scanning. point out that in that footage no controller was harmed to the point where it doesn't work anymore thanks <laughs> just the main aspect that the gameplay does introduce however is the difficulty now I play on rookie and even then I struggle there is a serious curve in skill and tactics that you can either progress with the game do it on different difficulties or you can go in and try and beat it on that. There's even an Iron Man setting which stops your save hoary. Now, for those who doesn't know a save hoary is before you make a decision, you press save. If it goes tits up, you just reload it. But there's a, a setting called Iron Man which stops you doing that so every decision is final because it auto saves. And there is no way to get around it. I am not skilled enough to press that button, nor am I skilled enough to do it on any higher difficulty than Rookie. You might be, and <laughs> God help if you do. But that also adds to the replayability of the game, because once you've completed it on Rookie, if you're actually good enough to get to the end, I'm not. I've restarted this game 50 or 60 times, and I still can't beat the damn thing. But if you can, go up to the next level, play again. And the beauty of it is, every time you play, the story or the area of the story is different. It's a different part of the map and not you don't start in the same place twice so there is a massive amount of replayability with the game too as far as the game sounds concerned it's a bit 50 50 on this one the bad side of the world sounds aren't brilliant i think the only two things that actually make sound in the world is weather and fire and, and they're not it honestly sounds like they've, they've taken them straight from the youtube creative studio it, it's not brilliant However, having said that, the 
enemy NPC voices are superb. I mean, your commandos, your soldiers are run of the mill. You've heard them in a thousand different games where you control troops. Yes, sir, off to me point, do this, blah, blah, blah. The only slight difference is that there's different accents um, depending on where the soldier comes from. So if he comes from Ireland, he's a, you know, he's a, hey, yes, sir, off we go, sort of type thing. Oh, that's the worst Irish accent in the world. What the fuck? But anyway, there's accents. Um, but from the enemy point of view, the sounds sound amazing. Now, there is one NPC that needs a special mention on this, and you might recognise his voice. Let's just play the footage. Council you once knew is no more. Its membership have all sworn loyalty to the Advent Administration. With one exception. It is good to see you again. In the days since your capture, I have done all I can to aid the resistance from the inside. Did you recognize that voice a little bit? Could it be... Hmm... Optimus Prime? Well, if you thought it was Optimus Prime, you'd be wrong. It's actually the geezer from Honest Trailers. <laughs> Let me show you. The epic voice of Honest Trailers. Come on. <laughs> hey, man. All right. Invitation came in and refuse. So fair dues to that geezer for actually voicing that. And he does a fantastic job. Um, the gun sounds are out of this world good. Um, each different gun sounds different, um, the shotguns sound particularly throaty and the, the magnetic guns sound like they're ready to tear anything apart. So, like I said, it is a bit of 50-50 good and bad as far as the sound's concerned, but the goods far outweigh the bad. The other sound aspect worth mentioning as well is the soundtrack, which pretty much sounds like anything you would expect to see in a Marvel movie. It's done exceptionally well, and I, I really liked it. It was sort of, it got a little bit repetitive towards the end because it's on loop constantly, but it sort of geared you up, you're ready to go, and it's like, right, let's get into this fight. And it sort of, I don't know, I added a sense of adrenaline to the situation, maybe. It's hard to explain, but you, you'll hear it for yourself, you'll know exactly what I mean. Overall, XCOM 2 is a good game. It's uh, whether it's worth forty quid, I don't know. Um, it's a very niche market, and if you're the type of person that likes micromanaging, um, that likes graphical games of chess, um, and certainly if you're a person that enjoys those things and a sci-fi fan, this is right down your street. If you don't like strategy games if you don't like top-down games if you don't like turn-based games stay away if you're in the middle of the road and you've never really tried one and you don't if you don't like it or not give it a go because i tell you what there is no finer example of how this genre can be done and if when you do play this game you enjoy yourself it opens up a whole new genre to you that you've never experienced before and that you'd be glad you did but XCOM is certainly the, the yardstick that this genre should be um, compared to. It does a fantastic job at everything that it needs to do. This is a few negatives, but not many. And I think, considering it's free, you're not going to find much better quality for your money. I mean, there's a there's a thing recently, probably about a week or so ago, about Green Man Gaming or something, that... Um, compares a game's value depending on how many hours you get out of it well as dumb as that is as absolutely bloody stupid and metric as that is i get why he's done it because he's been asked for it but as stupid and metric as that actually is if you're to compare this game on that metric <laughs> bloody hell for free it's the best value game on earth and there's you should be down with it whether you hate the genre or not in my opinion, in my honest opinion, you definitely should be trying this if, and only if, you like turn-based games. You like top-down games. If you can't stand those two, don't get it. If you can, or you're willing to try, get it. Absolutely get it. It's a superb game that you'll get tons of hours of fun out of. 
and tons of hours of stress as well. In my humble opinion, as the world's greatest gaming gorilla, well, the world's only gaming gorilla really, XCOM 2 is an exceptional game that stands up to 2018 scrutiny easily, without fail. And if you've ever been on the, the fence of getting this game, get it. Absolutely get it. Don't even think twice. Just get to your, get to your PlayStation Store, download it. It's free. You can't complain. It's free. But that's my opinion on it. Have you played XCOM 2? And if you have, what did you think about it? Or do you enjoy this niche genre? And if you don't, what is it about the genre you don't like? Maybe we can get into a discussion about it and I can try and maybe alleviate those issues that you feel you might have with XCOM 2. Whatever your thoughts, however, put it in the comment below. And as always, thank you so much for all your support and thank you so much for being here and watching these videos. I am new to this and every view is much appreciated. If you have liked this video, click the thumbs up sign, you know, the one that looks like this, just with less weight on it, I suppose. Or if you haven't liked this video, click that sign and leave your address so I can find you. And as always, if you like what you've seen and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and ring your notification bell. That's all from me, Mr. B. Have a now.